Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Sharon Aguilar. I'm glad you've joined me. Today I have a fun sewing project that I want to share with you. I have been going crazy this last few weeks sewing bucket hats. So I thought, hey, you know what? This is pretty easy to sew. So I would like to share with you how easy and how quick this is. This is a pattern that goes for anyone in your family. Um, I made one for my two year old all the way up to my husband. So um, anywhere in between. So all you need is one measurement and that is the measurement right here. I'll show that for, I'll show you that. Um, but first let me show you some of my hats. So as I said, I've made seven of these over the last week. Um, the first one I want to show you is my denim hat. Isn't it cute? So um, I think this one's my favorite because um, denim fabric is really sturdy. I didn't have to interface it when I sewed it and it just stays um, stable and nice and stable. So I really like this hat and it goes with a lot of outfits. So um, my second favorite is probably the one I made for swimming or for a rainy day. I got some performance fabric from Joanne and um, this fabric is nice and the water just runs off of it. You could use board short if you have any scraps of um, any kind of fabric that is polyester and has like a wicking on it that will definitely work. Um, and in the video I'll show you how I added some fun ties so I could strap it to my head and keep it on when I jump in the pool. That's this hat and I think it's pretty cool too. Um, if you, I use the elastic for these, but you can use really anything. And um, you can use some trim you have, um, some, I don't know, lots of different things. So you can also make your own. You can use the fabric you used on your hat and just sew a long strip on this part and attach it to your lining. So we'll go over that in the video. Let's see, I also used the linen for one. This was what, like my first hat and this one's actually ended up being a little too small. I can put it on, but um, it's it doesn't quite fit all the way down. Um, but you see how the linen is floppier, and I even interfaced it. So it just depends on the look that you're going for. This is corduroy. I think corduroy is great for the fall. And corduroy, this one's a, it's a thinner weight corduroy. So as you can see, it's um, a little floppier as well. Um, so all you're going to need is half of a yard of some heavier bottom weight fabric. You can use quilting cotton. If you use quilting cotton, you'll definitely want to interface it and maybe even pair it with a sturdier fabric because um, you'll need one for your mane and one for your lining. I use the same on my lining fabric as I did for my mane, but you can make yours reversible and use different fabrics, just whatever you want to pair um, with yours. Um, and then I'll show you my daughter's cute hat. I let her pick her fabric and and she picked this one. This is a home decorator fabric. It's an Amy Butler fabric and it has such a, it lays really nicely. I didn't have to interface this one at all. So it was a little bit quicker. Okay, let's measure. So to take your measurement, you're going to want to go around your head like this. So you're catching the bottoms kind of where it's worn and then coming up to your forehead. See, and I am a 22. It's probably easier to do this with a friend or with a mirror or some way that you can look at what your measurement is. And if you measure in between, you might want to go down. Um, if I was like 21 and a half, I, would, I might try the 21 first. Um, otherwise, if I was any bit over 21 and a half, I would make the 22. Uh, I kind of like a little bit of extra room in mine. Um, so I went with the 22 on the hats that I made. And with my kid's hat, I also went up a little bit because they're just gonna keep getting bigger and growing. Anyways, oh, let's talk about our pattern pieces. So you need to grab, you're gonna have three pattern pieces. You're gonna have the top of the hat, you're gonna have your crown, and then you're gonna have your brim. So whenever you have the brim, you have two options on your brim. So you can have a narrow brim or you can have a standard brim. On all my hats, I used a standard brim, except for on all my kids' hats, I used the narrow brim. Um, I noticed that's the big difference between the adults and the kids is that the kids really look better with the narrower brim. Um, so you'll need those cut out, those three pieces. I'll show me cutting those out um, as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm so glad you've joined me. So I'm gonna start with taping out my pattern. Um, you should have four pattern pieces, unless you are doing the one with the taller, that gives you like a deeper hat. Um, but if you're doing a standard crown, then you should have four pages. 
and I'm going to just be taping these together. So you have lots of different lines that you can line up when you're taping together. The first one I look at are these that go crossways and they go this way and I wanna make sure those are lined up and then I'm scooting it over to where it is just butting up to the other one. So I'm gonna check that it matches here, 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 and this way. And it's nice having these um, diamonds here to help to get it all lined up. And everyone's printer will pull the paper slightly different. So you're um, lining it up by these lines. If you line it up um, exactly, your if your printer pulled it differently, um, then you might not, like you can notice my printer pulls it a little bit off. So do you see how there's more of that black line showing than there is right here? And that's just because my printer pulled a little bit differently, but I made sure this right here matched up and then each of these lines on the page. And then now I'm gonna grab the next paper down. When you're printing this out, you're gonna wanna make sure on your settings that you print. Um, you do not want it to fit to sheet. You wanna print either as image or at 100% scale, or um, you just don't want it to change your pattern any. So I have mine all taped together, and now I'm gonna start cutting this out, and I'm gonna cut out my standard brim. I'll just show you what my pages look, and they all line up. And then now we're gonna cut these out, and then we'll get started cutting our fabric out. Okay, so I have all of my pieces cut out. I have my top, I have one of the main, and then one of the lining. And since my fabric is on the a thinner side, it's not as thick as like a denim or a canvas, I cut out um, interfacing for the main fabric. Um, and then I also have two sets of, this is the crown of the hat. So I have two pairs of that. So there's one, two, three, four total, as well as two to interface the main sections of it. And then I have my brim. You have the option of a narrow brim and then a wider brim. And I have that one cut on the fold. So when you unfold it, it looks like there's like a U shape to it. And I cut two out, one main, one lining, and then one interfacing. Now I'm gonna head over to the ironing board and I'm gonna press this onto the wrong side of my main fabric. So now that I have all my main pieces interfaced and then I have the exact duplicates in my lining, I just didn't interface my lining pieces, I am going to start sewing. The first step in sewing is I'm gonna take my circles and I am going to fold them in half like this and get some kind of tool to mark with. I like to use um, a water soluble marker, one that just goes away with water. And you're going to mark the edges on the circle and then you're going to fold it in half you're going to the other way you're going to put those marks you just made together and you're going to mark the edge of those so your markings should look like this like you've marked the four points now i'm going to do the same thing on the lining So now that we have our, our quarter points marked on our circles, we are going to take, um, this is called the crown of the hat. We're going to put our crowns right sides together. So you're gonna do your main pieces together and then I'm gonna put my lining pieces together, right sides together. And I am going to sew right here and right here. I'm just gonna sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance all along this edge on both of these. Okay, so now that I have this sewn, you can see the 3 8 inch seam allowance. I made sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end. And I'm gonna take these and open them up like this. 
and I'm going to line up my middle point like that and I'm gonna make marks on these edges. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can see where my quarter points are. Making a mark here, making a mark on the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. So on both sides, I'm making marks. So that was my main. So you see how I have marked my center points between those. I'm gonna do the same thing on my lining now. Now that I have those points marked, I am going to iron my seams to where my seams are flat. So I'm just gonna open the seam. So press the seam allowance, open. So I'm gonna press all these seams to where they look like this. Now I am going to take these, and I'm gonna leave them to where the wrong side of the fabric is facing out. And I'm going to, you see how there's one side that the circle is smaller than the other. So it's easier to see when you have it laying like this. So this one is the smaller circle and this one's a larger circle. So I'm gonna take the smaller circle and I'm going to put it on top of my main, the top of my hat, the main circle. And I'm gonna line up my seams with the marks that I have placed. Let me see if I can find them. The marks that I've placed when I quartered this. And then I'm going to make put pins there. One seam will be on one side and then the other seam will be exactly the opposite side. So it's going to look like that and then I'm doing it right sides together. So do you see how I'm kind of folding it in words like this when I'm pinning it? So make sure that the, the side that does not have us, so the side that looks like this, not the side that looks like this, is the side that is touching this. So now I'm going to do this one right side facing on the other point that I've marked. Now I'm gonna do this one. So it's gonna make it a lot easier if you mark in here because we're gonna be sewing all around this and the more clips and pins you have, I believe the easier it is. So you're going to just ease this to match it up So put a clip right here in the middle and do the same here. And you see how it's not going to be the straight edge. It's gonna, you're gonna kinda need to curve it in. You don't wanna have to stretch anything. You're just kinda seeing how you can match this area to where, on the place where you're gonna be sewing. And it's easier to do this with your hands um, before you head to the machine than it is to try and figure out what you're doing when you're at the machine. One way you can do it is see how it looks like that when I pull it. So now I know that this is a center mark and I'm gonna push it over here. So it's gonna kinda look like this if you make it all even and then you're gonna pull this to meet here and then put a clip in it. So it should look like this right now. So your seam, this, we're gonna go to the machine and we're gonna sew all around here. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and clip my lining and do the exact same thing I just did on this. So I'm at my machine and I'm going to sew all around the outside edge of this circle. So just start on one of your clips on your quarter points. And I'm sewing this with the 3 8 inch seam allowance. On mine, that's the, there's a marking right here. It's a very edge outside of my presser foot. Um, just a little bit over outside of the edge of the presser foot. And I'm only going to focus on getting from between one clip to the next clip. So you're going to ease the fabric in, which means that um, you're pushing it to where it's all even. It's nothing is going to be gathered. Um, nothing is going to be stretched. Um, it is going to fit nicely together. Okay, so you can see between these points, so I'm just gonna back stitch at the beginning of my seam. I'm making the edges line up. And I'm just going really kind of slow just so that I can line. Since it's not a straight line, you're, you're sewing in a circle. 
um, you're just making sure that it's not moving because on its own it's not just going to lay flat so you're kind of pushing it to pressing it with your fingers to make it lay flat where you want it to and with if you didn't clip on this and you're just trying to do it um, by winging it you're gonna you might get a little off because you really don't know how much you need to be pressing to force it together um, between each of these points so if you have all your clips in place or you've pinned really well um, then this part should be slow going but not complicated at all Okay, so now I'm going to repeat the exact same process. That was my lining that I did first, and now I'm gonna do it to my main. Um, just whichever order you wanna do them in, you're doing the exact same thing. Um, so, um, or you might even have um, a reversible hat. So you wouldn't even wanna call it a main and a lining. You'll just call it side one um, and side two. So um, if you've interfaced it, it's a little, um, trickier, or I don't know if the right word is trickier, but um, it takes a little bit more. It doesn't, your fabric's not going to give as much. It's um, not going to have the same amount of natural um, pliability that it would if it was non interfaced. So um, just be mindful of that. And you notice my fingers are just doing a lot of little finger pressing to make the areas lay down straight so that whenever they go underneath my needle, that I'm not sewing um, any like creases into my hat. Now you should have two things that look like this. See how nicely this one stands up because it's interfaced and now this one's a lot more floppy since it's not. Um, so anyways, we are going to press. Pressing will make your um, item look so much more professional um, and look well. And when we're done pressing, we're going to um, push the seam allowance towards the part that is standing up, which is the crown, and we're going to top stitch it down. Um, and the top stitching will also look make it stay there and make this um, stay nice and the seams stay nice and pressed down and flat looking. So I'm gonna press it like this. So I have the inside, the right side in, and I'm just pressing all along the seam line. And while I'm pressing, I'm making sure the seam is going where I'm wanting to sew it when I top stitch it. Okay, so now that I have pressed my hat, I the seam allowance towards the crown, I am going to top stitch the seam allowance this way. So I have it to where the wrong side is facing out and the right side is inside. And I'm going to just lay it down like this. Or actually it's easier to do it with the wrong side facing in. So I'm going to do it with the wrong side facing in and the right side out. That way um, I can see the seam allowance while I put it down. So you'll just wanna make sure whatever thread is in your bobbin is the color that you want showing on your right side. And I'm just gonna go and follow the same area. This is a, another way to make sure that you get your top stitching even, is that you keep the same amount of distance from the seam while you're stitching um, as you go all the way around. Okay, so this is what the hat should look like now that it's top stitched. Um, and then this is my inside, you can see where I've top stitched that seam down. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on my other piece. I'm gonna top stitch that one down as well. So now you should have two pieces that look like this. I'm gonna set those aside for just a second and we are going um, to grab our brim. So the brim should look like a U shape and you'll have two, one for the main and one for the lining. And we're just gonna take these and put them right sides together um, along this seam line right here. And you're gonna sew on that seam line with the 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna do this on both pieces. I'll sew right here and right here um, with my sewing machine with just a regular stitch. Okay, so now that I've sewn this seam with it right sides together, um, I uh, if you haven't already, you're gonna wanna mark this point where you folded it and you um, cut it on the fold. You're gonna wanna mark it, um, especially on the inside of this curve. And then that marking that you've made, you're gonna match it up to your seam line 
like this and make a mark where the halfway point is on that one. Um, we're just quartering this. It's gonna help us to line everything up as we attach it to our hat, to the crown of our hat. And I'm gonna do this on the other side as well. So this is my main, and then this one is my lining. Um, before I attach it, I'm also gonna go over to the, to the iron and I'm gonna push this seam open and press it flat. Um, I'm gonna get these points first though. And you're wanting them on the inside because the inside of the hat is where you can also get them on the outside. On the outside, it'll be nice to have quarter points whenever you attach your main to your lining. Um, it's not as imperative though as it is on this part because that seam will match up a little bit easier um, than the, this one will. Okay, so I have those marked. So now um, you should have these marked. We marked them whenever we were marking it to put it on here so that we can match it up. But I'm gonna go press this seam open before I line mine up. Okay, so now we are going to take this part of the hat, setting like this, and then the part that is the inner curve. So that would be this one. The inner curve. Um, so if you hold it, let's see, if I put the seam line like this, this side is going to attach to the hat. So you're going to just slip it over the hat, right sides together, and I'm going to align this, um, this seam, I'm going to align it actually with a midpoint. So here, do you, here you see these seam lines, and I'm going to align this one with the middle of this one. So these are, the pretty side of my fabric is facing the pretty side of the other one. I'm gonna go all along this hat and clip this to the outside. So you notice you got some areas where I haven't clipped it. It'll be easier if you go to those areas and you kind of see how it fits and clip in between them. The more clips, the merrier. Um, the more clips that you have there, the less um, problems that you're gonna run into. So it's not going to be completely even. So I'm just gonna kind of stretch it like this and you see that part that overlaps. I'm gonna bring it up to me because I'm gonna want my seam line to stay completely even all around and you are going to need to ease this hat in. Okay, so this is what this one looks like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clip my other, um, my lining, the brim to the lining of my hat. So I'm doing the exact same thing to both pieces. Um, I'm going to find this, the inner curve on this and put it right sides together along here and go through and clip that together. Once I have it all clipped together, I'm gonna head to the machine and I'm going to be sewing all along where I've clipped. So I'll set it down like this so that this part is facing up and then I'm just gonna turn it like a wheel while I sew. I'm at machine, I'm gonna grab one of these, either my main or my lining and I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to be sewing with the wrong side facing me because I have right sides together. And like I said, it's I'm sewing it kind of like a wheel. So I'm just kind of spinning it around, um, easing it. And if you, depending on if you interfaced or not, um, will be how easy it is to get your sides to match. On your interface side, it is going to be um, less pliable. So it'll take more of your time to um, baby it while you go around the curve. Um, but this goes together pretty smoothly, especially if you take time to pin everything together and clip it. Um, we're getting in the home stretch of our hat. Okay, so you should have your lining sewn and your main sewn, the, the brim of your hat. So it's starting to come together. Um, we're going to now press the seam. And this one, we are going to press towards, um, towards this middle section. So both seams are pressed inward. And then we're gonna top stitch it down. So I'm gonna press it. And then after I press it, when I go to the machine and top stitch it, I'm gonna lay it in a circle like this with the wrong side facing me. And I'm gonna go and then just push this seam allowance down and then sew it down. And as I sew, I'll just turn it like this. Um, and I'm, you can either get your iron right now, that's what I'll probably do is get my iron and push 
so it's already pressed really nicely. Or when you're sewing it, you can work on finger pressing it and keeping the seam nice and open. Um, and we're gonna do that for our main. Um, as well, we'll do it for our lining, okay? Okay, so now we're at the point in the hat where you should have two separate um, what looks like hats because you should have the crown top stitched and then you'll have your main and that's top stitched. Now we're going to put them together. So is what I'm going to do is take my lining and turn it to where um, the wrong side is showing. So the side that is not pretty, I'm going to have it showing. And then on my main, I'm going to have um, where the right side is showing out. And I'm going to put them together. And when I put them right sides together, I'm going to line up these seam lines like this. And I'm going to line up all along here. Use some clips just so that whenever you go to sew that you don't get off. So you just kind of clip it around. And we're going to take this to the machine and I'm going to put it like this and I'm going to sew the brim together. Um, on the hat and whenever I'm sewing I'm gonna leave like a two or three inch gap because I'm gonna be I'm gonna turn this one whenever I'm done sewing that area okay so clip around here so that it's all nice and even this will be an easy seam just because you're not having to ease it in um, because it's gonna meet perfectly or it should meet perfectly if your lining and your main were cut the exact same um, and then I'll start like, let's say if I start here, then I'll come around and I'll end here. So I'll leave like two or three inches so that I can put it back to the right side. Okay, so I'm back from the machine and this is what I have. Um, my wrong sides are showing on the outside and I've sewn all around this edge and left a gap. So let me show you, here's the gap. So now we are going to take and turn this all the way right side out. So I'm just going to start shoving the inside out so that the right side is showing. Okay, and now I have my right side showing. I'm gonna shove um, the lining in to the hat like this. And I'm gonna go give it a really good press. So I'm gonna take it to the ironing board and press to where it looks nice and crisp. And then after it's nice and pressed crisp everywhere, I'm gonna top stitch it. Now top stitching is one of those features that really um, allows it to look more professional and you, it's not something you really wanna skip. It also helps it to not shift around the lining to move. Um, so you're gonna just kind of poke out, use your fingers to press out to where the seam is even right here. And then the iron, when you press it, it'll keep it to where it holds. And so after I have all that pressed out, when I go to top stitch, I'm gonna top stitch really close to the edge on the outer, and then I'm gonna make just circles all the way around the hat. Um, I do mine about 3 8 inch apart. Um, I, anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a half an inch will look good. I think 3 8 inch is kind of the sweet spot, um, my favorite spot. So when I get to this, I'm going to just push the seam allowance in. So I'm gonna look and see that it's kind of even, that I've kept it even and then I'll press that part down, so like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna head over to the ironing board. I'm gonna give this a really good press everywhere. Um, and it's starting to look like a hat. All we have is our top stitching. I wanted to show y'all that whenever I'm ironing the top of the hat, I use like a pillow from my couch. You could also use a stuffed, like a stuffed animal, when you grab one of your kids' stuffed animal, or grab something that will kind of fill this for you because it might be hard to get these edges um, on your ironing board. It's easy to get the brim on your ironing board. You can just use the edges, but it's harder to get this area. So just find something like a some kind of stuff, stuffed animal or a pillow or um, something that you can find in your home that's the right size so that you can kind of press this nice and flat. So I have done my first round of top stitching and I did it just about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. 
Um, and now I'm going to top stitch the rest of this brim. So I'm now going to follow this line with my presser foot. So I'm gonna have that this go along the edge of my presser foot so that I'm sewing 3 eighths of an inch away from this. And I'm just gonna keep going around until I finish top stitching the brim. So I'm going to show one variation on the hat that is very useful if you are prone to losing your hat or you want to jump in the swimming pool or go on a boat or anything that's going to be really windy. Um, and that is to put some kind of like a drawstring in your lining so that you can cinch it underneath your chin. Um, so it, in order to do this, whenever you are just about to, to attach the brim onto the lining. So I only have my lining pieces here. You are going to want to get, I am going to use just swim elastic. This is a quarter inch natural swim elastic. Another really good option is to get, um, this is some cording, some elastic cording, and to get a toggle. So if you're going to do the elastic cording with a toggle, it's always really nice to also to get a bead. So I'll show you on this hat how it looks. Um, constructed. So it's nice to feed it through both ends like this and then to have a bead to serve as like a stopper on the end. And that way you can cinch your hat. And the bead works for you just to have something to grab underneath here. Um, and then you can cinch your hat. Um, and then, um, so here's one toggle that I got. So I would open it up and put both pieces through there with that on the end. I would cut it um, anywhere from, let's say, 36 to 38 inches long. You can always go a little bit shorter if you're doing just one piece. Um, and then in that case is what you're going to do is attach it in a loop like this to this seam where you're gonna put your lining. Um, I am going to be doing, I didn't have, I wasn't making a black hat, so I didn't wanna use black cording. So I'm just gonna use um, the elastic. The elastic feels nice and soft. And since it's swim elastic, I know it's gonna hold up when I jump in the pool. So I'm gonna put some beads just because it's like festive on the end and then tie them in a knot and it'll kind of give me something to grab down there. And then is what I'm gonna do when I go to attach the brim to the lining. So not to the main, um, you're, it's gonna be wrong if you put it on your main. So on your, whatever you have decided will be your lining, I'm going to attach the brim lining to the crown. So I'm gonna line all of this up. I've put that right sides together, so it's gonna look like this when it's attached. But is what I'm gonna do is grab my two pieces. I cut this 16 inches long, and you're gonna put them on the side seam. So the side seam are going to be the seams, the two seams that are on the side of the crown. So you're gonna find those two seams and you're going to sandwich this into where you've clipped it. So I'll kind of remove this clip and push it through like this. So whenever I sew the seam, this elastic is gonna get caught in this seam. There's one and put it along the other side seam. So that way, so this is going to be your lining of your hat. So whenever you go to put your lining in, your mane will be sitting on top and you're going to have some strings hanging at the bottom so that you can tie it to your head. Um, okay, so I'm going to go through and finish clipping all around to attach this. And um, once this is attached, then I will be ready to sew my mane to my lining and then I'm gonna have some fun little strings coming out lining. So um, if you attach beads or whatever you attach at the bottom, you're gonna wanna tie a knot underneath those and then have them stay, or you can put anything decorative here. Another option is to use like some twill tape or just any anything that you have laying around um, that you think will work smoothly, that you can tie into that seam. I wouldn't go higher than like 3 8 inch. I think like a quarter inch looks good um, on the width. Okay, so now I wanted to show you what it looked like. So I just sandwiched this 
in between the seam. The elastic is in there. And then after I sewed my regular seam, I went back and just did some zigzags over it to kind of secure it in case somebody pulls it really tightly that it's nice and secure in there. And I did that on both side seams of the lining. So now my lining looks like this, but when I have the lining inside my hat when I'm wearing it, I'm gonna have my strings hanging down like this. So now that we're at this point, we can put our lining and our main right sides together. Um, and then you're just going to kind of let this hang out. When you're sewing um, your lining and your main together, whenever, wherever your hole is that you are leaving to be able to turn it out, you're gonna wanna put this elastic hanging out of that hole because you don't wanna sew um, this into that. So you'll need this to peek out. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I have my lining and my main and I'm just going to put, let's see, I'll put this one like this. And I'm gonna put them right sides together. I'm gonna to line up the, um, the seam line. So let's say my hole's right there, so it's gonna, I'm not gonna sew over these. So I'll sew all the way around this hat. Let's see, it's not lined up yet. I'll sew all the way around the outside of this hat, leaving these in the gap. Okay, so I'm gonna head to the machine and sew those together. First, I'm gonna clip it around so I don't get off. Okay, so now that we have our hat finished, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. So if you plan on wearing your hat and when it's hot weather outside, you may wanna add some kind of um, either a grommet or an eyelet um, along your side, along your seam lines. Um, that go on the side of the hat. So I'm gonna add two eyelets right right here. If you didn't mark it, there's a marking on the pattern piece, but if you forgot to mark it, you can just mark it with your with your hand with like a with a marker that will um, wash off. Um, and then just make sure you keep your holes even and you'll do two right here and then two on the other side. So my machine has, um, when you look in your manual and every machine will have a different one. So my machine will do a little eyelet and then um, I'll just use like some kind of puncturing tool to mark through that um, and make it a, a hole there. And that will give you ventilation in your hat so that your head doesn't get too hot. Um, but if it's like a rain hat, you don't really want holes in it because then it's gonna get water through it. But if it's a hat for like walking outside, um, you'll really like having the eyelets on that. If you wanna use a grommet, I would use maybe a quarter inch, three eighths inch. It's really up to you because it's just for the purpose of getting some ventilation um, along here. Okay, so that's everything. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this video helpful. Leave me a comment or like this or share this video. Um, give me any feedback you have. I appreciate you joining. Thank you.